How can you check if a number is divisible by 35? Well, 35 is 5 times 7, so we can just check if the number is divisible by 5 and by 7. That works for 35, but it doesn't always work like this. Let's say I was checking for divisibility by 16. 16 is 4 times 4, but I can't just check if a number is divisible by 4, otherwise we'd be concluding that all multiples of 4 are also multiples of 16. To take another example, 36 is 9 times 4, but it's also 2 times 18 and 6 times 6. If we use 6 times 6, then again, clearly we can't just check if the number is divisible by 6 and 6 to see if it's divisible by 36, otherwise we'd have to conclude that 6 is a multiple of 36, which of course it isn't. We also can't just check 2 and 18, since then we'd have to conclude that 18 is a multiple of 36 because it's a multiple of 2 and of 18, which is clearly wrong. But we can say that any number that's a multiple of 9 and a multiple of 4 is a multiple of 36, so what's the difference? Well, it works for 9 and 4 because they don't have any common factors. If a number is a multiple of 9, it must be 9 times some other factors. If it's a multiple of 4, it must be 4 times some other factors. Since there's no overlap of factors between 4 and 9, the number must be 4 times 9 times something else, so it must be a multiple of 36. But if we know that a number is a multiple of 18, then it's 18 times something, and so we automatically know it's a multiple of 2 already. Adding that it's a multiple of 2 doesn't give us anything extra. Similarly, if we know that a number is a multiple of 12 and a multiple of 15, we can't say that the number is a multiple of 12 times 15, or 180, because 12 and 15 have a factor of 3 in common. So if you tell me that a number is a multiple of 12, then we know it's 3 times 4 times something, but if you also tell me it's a multiple of 15, then we know that it's 3 times 5 times something, but we already knew it was 3 times something, so we just know it's also a multiple of 5. So overall we can only tell that it's a multiple of 3 times 4 times 5, or a multiple of 60. So the full result here would say that if you know a number is a multiple of x and also a multiple of y, then it's not necessarily a multiple of x times y, but it will definitely be a multiple of the lowest common multiple of x and y. That's a bit more than we need to do for these math challenges at this level, so what I want you to take away from this for now is that when you have two numbers that don't have any factors in common, then you can say that any number that's a multiple of both of them will be a multiple of their product. But this is only true when the numbers don't have any factors in common. In particular, if you take two prime numbers, this will always work. So to test if a number is a multiple of 6, we can just check if the number is a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3, because 2 and 3 are prime, and so they definitely don't share any factors. So a number is a multiple of 6, if and only if it's an even multiple of 3, and you can use the digit sum test as before to check if it's a multiple of 3. If you want to check if a number is a multiple of 143, you can notice that 143 is 11 times 13, and since 11 and 13 are both prime, we can check if the number is a multiple of 11 and a multiple of 13. If it's both, then it will be a multiple of 143. Now the numbers don't necessarily have to be prime, they just have to have no factors in common, so again, if you knew a number was a multiple of 15 and a multiple of 7, you could say that the number is definitely a multiple of 105, which is 15 times 7, because 15 is 3 times 5, doesn't have any factors in common with 7. But it's not such a simple rule when the numbers do have a factor in common, so be careful.